we have been seeing declining spruce trees and other evergreens for a couple of years. And it's been due to a few factors. Yes, there are some diseases that have added to, added to the, the decline. However, it's been a rough couple of years to be a tree, when, especially when we think about some of, our some of the environmental conditions that, that these trees have had, to, have had to deal with. The questions that we were getting on spruce trees, again, they were just kind of general decline. Maybe there was some early needle drop, or maybe the needles were yellow or brown. In some cases, we had pretty severe tip dieback. And unfortunately, with spruce trees, once those branches are dead, they will, not re they will not replace themselves, and you're just going to have a bare spot. As I mentioned, there are a few different diseases that have, ha have, aided, have added to the, to the stresses on, on spruce trees this year, with needle casts certainly being one of, the, one of the major ones. Now in Nebraska, we have two primary needle cast diseases. The first is rhizosphera needle cast, and rhizosphera needle cast is fairly well understood. It's been a problem of a problem on spruce trees for in, in Nebraska for quite a few years. And what happens is the fungus infects the, infects the, younger, um, the younger actively growing needles in the spring as they are first emerging, but typically it's not until next year that we'll see any of the damage occur. So with any of our needle cast diseases, we have the, the tips of our branches re remain nice and green while Second, while well, two-year-old, three-year-old, and older needles will have turned brown and dropped. Now, the other needle cast that we get in Nebraska is stigmina needle cast. Stigmina needle cast is a, is a relatively new disease and not quite as well understood as rhizosphera, but we do think that it behaves somewhat similarly to rhizosphera within the, within the environment. Now, as I mentioned, both of these diseases do, inf do infect in the spring, but we often don't see their injury occur until the next year. Fungicides can be used for, to control these needle cast diseases. However, control only due to fungicides can be very difficult. And you'll also want to do some things to increase airflow through the canopy and decrease that needle wetness period. And so maybe that's selective, br uh, selective pl pruning having a nice layer of mulch underneath the tree, or making sure that our sprinkler system doesn't hit those needles is very effective at reducing needle casts. Now, needle casts alone typically aren't enough to kill a branch. Unfortunately, there are some other diseases that will come in too and work in tandem with needle casts. So we have some cankers that affect our spruce trees as well. The, most, the two most common cankers that we see on spruce are Diportha canker, um, formerly known as Phomopsis canker, and Cytospora canker. Now regardless of which canker pathogen you have, control is going to be pretty much the same. Um, really only, all that we can do is cut out those infected limbs because fungicides are not effective at controlling any of these cankers, especially in landscape-sized trees. Now, some of these cankers may produce, um, Cytospora canker produces a nice kind of white pitch on the branch, and so that can be a little bit more visible, as you'll just see this white resinous material on the dead branches signifying Cytospora canker. However, Diportha, or Phomopsis canker, is often, often goes unnoticed as it doesn't produce any external symptoms. The only way that we can actually see diportha canker is by scraping away a little bit of the bark on those infected branches, and we will typically see a nice area of discoloration just underneath that bark tissue. Again, as I mentioned, not a whole lot that we can do to control cankers aside from, aside from pruning as fungicides are not effective. Now, additionally, in, um, in addition to these environmental conditions, urban landscapes can be difficult for many spruce trees, um, as we often have compacted soils in our ur urban environments that will negatively impact um, tree, tree health. Now, when we are thinking about management, management of, any of these any of these problems on our spruce trees, we have a few things that we want to, take, we want to keep, in, keep in mind. First is that dead branches will not recover. And so as you're thinking about a management plan, is this a tree that you will want to save? 
Or is this a situation where maybe we need to start thinking about a new tree, a new tree in the future? Often, if we're going to go the fungicide route, it will require multiple fungicide applications in, a, in each year and repeating those fungicide applications for multiple years. So it can be very costly and a very time consuming process to manage these, to manage any of these diseases. Finally, whenever we are planting new spruce trees, we just really want to be thinking about our site selection and that we are planting the right tree in the right place. Whenever we have our spruce trees in areas that are outside of their, na their native range, that's when we tend to see a lot of these problems occur.